Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Greedfall. That's right, it's the latest AA strategy game to be published by Focus Home Interactive, and you know what? It's pretty spicy. Basically, imagine The Witcher 3, but with 90% more jank and 2,000% less budget. Oh, and also it's set at the height of the colonial era, meaning it's most importantly exceedingly British, which is all that I look for in a game. Nothing says fantastic game, which Spiff is going to rate 11 out of 10, like a game which features glorious colonialism. My oh my oh my. But hey, what are we doing in Greedfall today, ladies and gentlemen? Well, basically, I've been playing this game quite a fair bit, and I've discovered something rather unique. There are some rather overpowered features that this game, um, kind of has, my goodness, and they can be exploited for maximum profit. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be cheesing many aspects of the game to make the entire thing a walk in the park. I'm literally talking soloing all of the bosses in this game without taking any damage level of cheese. That's what we're going to be heading for today. So today we're going to be starting a new game together. That's right, make sure to grab yourself a cup of tea. This is going to be a fantastic one, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, let's dive right into a brand new game. Now when it comes to difficulty mode, you can go completely wild and put yourself into extreme mode. However, I'd like to demonstrate what this game is going to be like for the average everyday person when you do these exploits. So we're going to be playing on normal difficulty. But trust me, hard and extreme difficulty, this is still going to be the most overpowered way of dealing with your enemies. If anything, it might even make it even more easy to deal with high level enemies due to the fact that we're going to be basically stun locking them, constantly being out of reach and breaking most of the combat systems in the game. Anyway, let's begin a fantastic game. We're going to create a fantastic person. And here he is, the most spiffing of characters. Sadly, he comes with a name pre-attached to him. He is called Disarde. But don't worry, we're going to be playing as him and teaching him all of the fantastical benefits of our cheesy exploits. Now the first and most important decision, which you always face at the start of an RPG game, is which starting class to go for. You can be a warrior and wield mighty swords, slamming around and bashing your enemies. You can be a technical, which means you set traps, you handle firearms, you also deal with one-handed blades. Alternatively, you can use magic. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Now I've seen a lot of people say that magic is relatively overpowered because they have a special ability called stasis, where you can hold one enemy in location whilst you just deal with the other. However, they're wrong, because I'm going to be combining two exploits to create a mega exploit. That's right, it's going to be fantastic. And for that, we need to not be using magic, we need to be using guns. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, because guns are so much more overpowered. I mean, come on, you're playing a game about going to a new world and colonizing it. It's kind of expected that you're going to use guns to do it. I mean, who would win? A thousand boys with pointy sticks or just one exploity spiff with a gun? I mean, we've seen it before in Mountain Blade, we've seen it in Skyrim. Guns always have a habit of winning when put in the hand of Spiff. Naturally, when it comes to our first point, you're just going to sink it into accuracy. This basically means that all guns do an extra 10% damage, and this goes all the way up. You can get it up to accuracy level 5, meaning all guns do an extra 50% damage, which might add is pretty crazy. So yes, we're going to naturally improve that. And the next step is to basically sink a point into something. Now, these are talents. We're not going to get another one of these until level 5, so they're relatively important. Now, my favourite talent is, as always, Charisma, due to the fact that Charisma is ridiculously overpowered. If there is any form of confrontation in this game, you can use Charisma to literally talk your way out of it. And the issue is, once you get Charisma up to the highest level, you basically have a 100% chance to successfully pass almost all speech checks. It is absolutely broken, the situations you can get into, because you can almost always talk your way out. But nonetheless, for this exploit to work most effectively, we're going to have to put one point into science. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start our game. Now, here we are, fantastically in the game, and because I decided to buy this game upon release, they give you an extra piece of starting equipment. That's right, it's literally a coat which gives you an extra 25% loot, which is very impressive. And then some goldsmith gloves, some cheeky boots, and fantastic, we're all set. Oh, and also a very nice rifle. Now, basically, when it comes to weapons that we're going to be equipping, the only stats that particularly matter are the rate of fire and the stun. A weapon with high stun is basically going to stop any enemy or boss in its track. Anyway, let's get on with the tutorial and beat our fantastic captain and prove that we are the best and we're going to be safe to be sent to this fantastic new colonial world. Ah yes, Kurt, my old mentor. You seem to be a tad upset that the fantastic spiffing is heading to a new world and colonizing well. Naturally, when it comes to colonization, you want to make sure that you're ready for colonization and to actually be sent to the new world. Now, when it comes to fighting in this game, the game is expecting us to 
to use our swords and to basically whittle Kurt down using our fantastic improved agility to win the game. Now when it comes to doing an attack I'm just simply going to stun Kurt three times as he won't fight back in this mode and now we need to defend ourselves three times and fantastic we've done that and now we need to prove that we can fight. Ah, oh, Kurt my f old mentor I'm so sorry you just can't beat a gun. Wait are we ending this cutscene with me hitting him with a sword? No 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 no. Pretty sure I just fired three rounds into that man's head. He should not be standing game. Oh well. Now we just need to go say goodbye to our mother and then we're finally set to go off into the new world and start colonizing. Fantastic. We've managed to say goodbye to the old lady. Now we're off into this glorious world. My goodness this game is most impressive to look at. Now there are a bunch of tutorial missions we can do to get ourselves some levels before we go over to the new world. However ladies and gentlemen it's not actually worthwhile. Instead we're going to try and leave this place as soon as possible. Now what I'm immediately going to do is just sell off all of the excess weapons and equipment which I don't actually need but have a very large amount of. For example this very nice bit of armor here which I'm never really going to be able to wear it's too heavy and clunky so we're just going to sell it for 54 gold which in this game is actually a fair amount and then with all of that money we're instead going to be buying ourselves some ammunition. Ah oh, fantastic I've managed to level up to level 2. Now basically we're just doing the basic mission that you have to sadly in this game which is to rescue your cousin from a little cell up there somewhere no big deal but most importantly by doing this we've managed to level up our character now with a level up comes investing points into skills now one of our many skills is of course the skills of firearms and so we're going to slowly be specking our way down there with point number one increasing damage from all firearms by 20 percent now you can see where this is going because we already have a plus 10 percent damage to all of our firearms oh no now we are about to experience the first boss fight that this game has to offer it's going to be quite interesting and of course beforehand we're going to want to grab ourselves some ammo and also why not a couple of these now basically one great big bossy boy is going to hop out of that ship and we're going to naturally fight it ah oh, yes let the rumbling begin oh no the beast has awoken ladies and gentlemen oh my he is quite a big boy indeed oh and he really does hit anyway i'll quickly just lay down a couple of traps here but you know what i might as well just coat the entire place in traps although in actuality i intend to just shoot him as you see this man has no armor so we can just simply sidestep around stun lock him and then just keep shooting him bearing in mind we can shoot at almost any range and we can shoot our gun relatively quickly too glorious success and gameplay 100 percent pure skill and not just tapping shift and the one key and now here we go we're transporting ourselves to the brand new continent which is going to be full of wildlife and natives completely untapped and uncolonized ladies and gentlemen imagine that an uncolonized land just ripe for the picking oh naturally is going to give us level three. Oh, how very very exciting. Come on Queenie, have I made you proud? Are you proud of me Queenie? Here we are colonizing a brand new world for all of the lovely ladies and gentlemen at home. Hey Queenie, have you ever considered colonizing? You know it's been a while. What's that Queenie? You will? <gasps> You're going to create the next British Empire? And it's going to be called British Empire 2 Electric Boogaloo? My what a fantastic choice of name Queenie. So what do we have to do to help you do that Queenie? Oh. I see. 15,000 likes is all you want from the lovely ladies and gentlemen at home, and then you'll take that as a sign of popularity in the Second British Empire? Well, that sounds fantastic. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you. Oh, and yes, now we're level three. So, of course, we want to sink another point into firearms, which is going to give us an extra 20% armor damage with each of our shots. So I just had to massively alter all of the settings that this game is running on because it was causing crippling FPS issues on my end. I'd like to point out that I'm running one of the most expensive Intel processors on the market at the moment as well as an RTX 2080 Ti. I'm running this game above medium graphics with all of these options for some reason forces the FPS to go down to console levels of about 30 frames per second. Now I'm afraid my eyes physically can't even process that and I would physically melt. So for that reason, yeah, we're going to be playing on medium graphics from now on. And honestly, I can't tell a difference. So yes, we've been given various main quest missions. We don't want to do any of that. Instead, what you want to do is head straight out of here onto the Eastern Gate and find this lovely merchant with a caravan here. Now you want to speak to the caravan leader and we're going to travel all the way over to San Mateus. Now San Mateus is another very unique city in this game. However, what we are really interested in are the resources around San Mateus. I mean, look at this. We have some beautiful plants 
plants offering a veritable bounty of crafting supplies. Now with our plan we're going to be needing a lot of crafting supplies so make sure to grab all of these fantastic resources but be warned once you've grabbed them that's all you're getting. These bad boys don't respawn because I mean if they were able to respawn then you could just keep coming back here and getting an unlimited amount of resources and crafting whatever you wanted and that there'd be no limitations to your power. Now don't ask me why but for some reason human bandits over here have the best loot. They also always scale to your level so they're never actually too difficult to kill and most importantly they're just exceedingly easy enemies. Oh my goodness one of them just shot me. You're not allowed to do that. Only I'm allowed to use guns. Well, I mean, actually, you are allowed. But there we go. All of the bandits are defeated and we've gained some experience. But most importantly, looting these guys is going to prove rather valuable. Hopefully, they've got some good stuff on them. Fantastic. That's a very nice looking chest piece there. An increase of armor of about 60. And it also increases our lockpicking skill. Oh, and he also had some ammunition. Now, there's a chest here which requires lockpicking level 2 to open. So sadly, even with that body armor, we won't be able to open it. But we will most certainly be able to upgrade most of our armor to something much much, much better. So next time we fight some bandits, we'll be in a better position. Oh, and what's this? A pile of ore? Oh, we got some iron ore there. Now, iron ore is exceedingly important because iron is used to refine bullets. However, it's a very tricky resource to come by. So it's always useful to remember where you can gather some. Now, once again, it's very simple. We find some bandits and we just want to start fighting them. And remember to use guns because these bad boys are overpowered. Look at that, 400 damage. And of course, once we hit someone with a gun, Gun, they suddenly become much easier to finish off with a sword. Oh, and I do believe that's everyone dealt with. And what's this? You drop an old flint revolver, a much more impressive weapon, and some ammunition. Very nice. Now after that fantastic fight, we've managed to end up with more ammunition than we first expected, but most importantly, we actually need to do those fights more often, because as you can see, we've gained experience, but most importantly, we've gained some really valuable loot, as well as also resources for crafting from those fights, be they from the actual bodies themselves, or from just picking stuff up off of the ground. Now the issue with picking stuff up off of the ground is they don't respawn and neither do the enemies. You can always just save, exit out of the game and then reload the entire thing and sure they'll respawn but that takes a lot of effort. Instead all you want to do is set up a camp. I know it's very complicated and then once you have a camp set up you simply want to sleep until night time. That's all it takes and then sleep again. Now this time we're going to be sleeping for four days straight so you want to just hit E click night time and just do that four to five times. Actually not to be on the safe side I recommend you do it for six. There is nothing in this game which has a time constraint by the way so you are allowed to wait as much as you like but what's most important is that it is now night time because at night time more enemies spawn and also generally find that they drop better loot. Now if you remember we had a big fight with some bandits in this region so yes the bandits have respawned. That's a very good sign for us. Now these bandits are fairly simple to finish off they don't take too much effort and oh Oh, we're now level four. That was rather easy. We haven't even done any quests yet. Maybe you just don't need quests to do this game. But of course, as you remember, ladies and gentlemen, this resource that we picked up here not too long ago, it disappeared after we picked it up. Same for these bushes and same for all of these bodies, which for some reason we can just loot again. Oh no. So yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to loot them. And what's this? A better weapon? Oh, don't mind me. I'll be grabbing that. Even if I don't end up using it, I can always sell it on for some pretty decent money. So whilst you're here you want to grab all of those resources there and make your way over to the next location. Although actually let's spend some of our points. What's this? Impact bullets? Firearms cause an extra 25% stun? That sounds fantastic. Oh and now that we have another attribute make sure to sync that into accuracy as that's going to increase the damage and armor damage of all of our weapons again by 10%. Lovely stuff. Now once again we've picked up the iron ore giving us some of the most valuable resources in the game and over here there should be another set of what's this? Oh, the bandits are back. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not going to let you fire off your gun. Uh, thank you very much, but I need all of your ammunition, please. And the same can be said for you. Now, whilst I can be using my gun here, it's kind of a waste of ammo to use bullets on really fleshy, easy human enemies because they don't actually take much to go down. But anyway, let's go steal all of their stuff. A health potion. Nice. Some gold. A silver signet ring and some ammunition. Lovely stuff. Basically, you want to grab everything because sure, yes we're going to eventually run out of space to store it all but it doesn't really make much of a difference because we can just store it elsewhere. Now that those bandits are finished you want to simply come on down here and another group of bandits have spawned in. You'll also notice that we're about a third of the way through level four. Oh, and there's one last enemy. Job done. 
some fantastic more bandits have been dealt with. What's this? You drop a four-barreled pistol? Nice, that looks very good. Be grabbing that. So yes, we're getting more loot and better loot also for ourselves. You know what, let's actually equip that bad boy. Oh my, oh my. Now this is looking very spicy. Oh my, and a precision flintlock rifle. Oh, now this thing also looks absolutely fantastic. Look at that, 290 stun. It's ridiculous. And some ammunition, thank you very much. But up here, of course, because it's nighttime, an even greater squad of bandits have spawned in. So don't mind me. Oh, and that's immediately half your health gone in one shot. Ah, uh, combat in this game, it sure is rather easy when you have weapons and the AI does not. Well, actually, technically these human bandits do have weapons, but they're just not that good and it's also pretty easy to dodge a bullet, yet for some reason the AI actually has no chance of dodging our bullets. Doesn't particularly sound fair to me because it means I will always get the shot off, whereas they won't. Also around here, once you take out those bandits, you also want to then move on to these lovely beastie boys, which you can find about here. They're nothing too difficult to fight with, and if you're really having a bit of a faff with them, why not shoot them? Yes, because bullets always work, and oh my, this gun shoots pretty quickly. Well, we're going to burn for a lot of ammunition with that. So so what now? We've managed to clear out effectively everyone. Where are we going to go? Well, quite simply, you just want to run all the way back to your camp. And now that we're back at the camp, you just want to do the exact same thing again. Sleep another six days and head out when it's night time. And bam, back out we go again. Once again, we've got more bandits here. And these are probably going to be the bandits which are going to be enough to get us up a level. Oh my, this gun of ours, it is very exciting. Oh, and that's level five. Okay, we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. So with level five, we're now able to unlock the rifle which is a very important upgrade because rifles are exceedingly overpowered and for our talent we're going to invest in science 2. Science is a very useful skill to have because it's basically going to allow us to craft our own bullets if we want to. And once again remember to grab all of the loot which should have respawned and steal everything off of the bodies. Fantastic. There's a lot of loot to be had around here and also sometimes the game glitches out and won't show you where it is but once you memorize where all of the spots are no problem whatsoever. Now we're going to swing around over to here and hopefully we'll have even more bandits. Remember these guys are going to scale with you constantly so if we were to be I don't know level 4279 then these lovely guys are also going to be level 4740 billion and if that's the case they're going to be dropping loot scaled equivalent to that. The main missions in the game however won't be having too many enemies actually scaled to you. Well there is indeed a very large amount of loot which we are stealing off of these fantastic people and once again you you might remember these lovely beastie boys from the last night we came out here. Well, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. They have, of course, reset themselves. So this is going to make our job even easier, especially when we set out a load of landmines for them too. There we go. Thank you very much, beasties. This is all the lever and stuff I need. Now, as bullets are effectively our main resource in this game and more valuable than money, there are only really two resources we need, fungus and crude iron ore. Both are very easy to come by, especially considering that they respawn here. Oh my, all of you bandits what are you doing? You shouldn't have tried to fight the mighty Spiff. No one can win. Thank you very much for all of your experience, but most importantly, the loot, which is quite tasty indeed. Now that we've done that once more, it's back we go. And once again, we're going to reset the campsite and start over. Although this time, you know what, let's craft some more ammunition for ourselves. And we do have a very large amount of crafting supplies at this point. So yes, this can be repeated effectively as many times as you like, as you're always going to get roughly the same amount of experience from the enemies every single time you do it. You're going to be going up roughly a level or 75% a level every single time you do that run. For that reason it becomes rather overpowered and rather quickly. Also if you're running low on supplies to use, these fantastic weapons which the enemies keep dropping for you, just recycle them because there's quite a high chance you're going to get loot from them. I also completely forgot that I have the ability to now wield rifles so I should probably be using this weapon instead. Speaking of this weapon it can also be upgraded. As you can see here we can increase its damage by 20, maybe increase its stun by a further 8, or increase its armor damage, making it more powerful at cutting through people's armor. Right, I think we're just going to do a flat upgrade and give this bad boy an extra 20. Most importantly, we're going to now be able to craft ammunition, which just requires one iron ore and two fungus. Now, it's very important to remember that at the next level of alchemy, also bullets become cheaper to craft, meaning that you're going to need to spend less resources every time you craft a bullet. Alternatively, another way is that we could just buy bullets, because I mean, we pick up a lot of weapons off of these people and they sell for quite a large amount. I mean we are doing
doing this exploit next to a city. So yes, you know what, let's sell all of the excess weapons after this run. Anyway, it's time for the Mega Rifle. Let's do this. And Mega Rifle, away! Oh my, there goes half your health. And you! And you! Oh no, you're just dead. Ah, oh, now this is easy. Wait, we have 45 bullets? Okay, we're definitely not meant to have 45 bullets at this level of the game. Oh, and that's level 6 instantly. Of course it's level 6. Why wouldn't it be level 6? Oh, what a game. What a game. This is balance. Anyway, thank you for all of your equipment. AI, it, it will be used valiantly, I'm sure. Thank you for all of your ammunition tree. That's right, for some reason we make bullets off of the bark of a tree. It makes sense to someone. Oh, but of course we leveled up, so where do the points go? At this point, it doesn't really matter where the points go. We can increase our one-handed blades ability, or actually, if we have two points to spare, we can instead invest them in anointed weapons, which allow us to basically apply poisons and potions to our bullets for some reason, because that seems like it's perfectly not a war crime. Anyway, hello there, bandits. I'm afraid it's time for you to die. Now, every time we hit one of these guys with a bullet, they almost immediately drop down to the floor. Oh, my goodness. In fact, it's in comparison to actual questing. It's not difficult to level up in this game at all using combat. Questing would have us probably do about four quests, which might last maybe a couple of hours to actually get anything out of the story up to this point. I mean, honestly, it can take you up to about four hours in the game to reach this level, and yet we've managed to do it almost instantaneously out of the gate. Also, for some reason, we're not going down in ammo because we're using less ammo when it comes to killing these bandits, because our gun has now just become objectively better. Yes, our gun now does a ridiculous amount of damage. Oh my goodness, it can even one hit, and poof. And alternatively, if you're tired of fighting... Anyway, here's a lovely beastie boy. Sorry, beastie boy. I'm going to have to stun you. Basically, once we get your ammo down to zero, you fall onto the floor. But anyway, you're dead. So there we go. Fantastic expedition. We're now halfway through level six, almost at level seven. And I think it's time that we make our way into the city to sell off almost all of our supplies because, my goodness, we have way too many. Now, the thing is, there are many ways to do this loot exploit if you really want because, for example, in all of the major cities, you have a house which you can sleep in and do this exact same thing. When it comes to this house here in San Mate, you can sleep in here, sleep for six days, come outside, and then suddenly this chest here will have respawned, this chest here will have respawned, this one next door to your house will have respawned, and so will that one at the end of the street. So you can just grab all four of these chests, then run back into your house, and job done, reset it. And you can repeat this an unlimited amount of time to be given a unlimited amount of goods, and probably you'll never ever need to buy anything like ammunition health potions ever again. We can grab all of the health potions you'll ever need by just a quick 10 minutes of hopping back and forth out of a bed. This game, it's very unique, but it's also exceedingly good fun. Oh, here's a lovely merchant who we're going to sell all of our stuff to. I mean, look at these weapons. They're great. 55 gold each. We're never going to be able to use them, so we might as well sell, sell, sell. You know, something tells me they designed this adventure game to be played in a way where you go and do your fantastic quests, experience the beautiful court intrigue, and job done. Well done. You've managed to do everything a big pat on the back, the game's challenging but not too challenging. They probably did not design it in such a way that Spiff would just run in here, absolutely cheese the game's combat mechanic, cheese the fact that the experience and items scale with the enemies, but only a certain few enemies, and also for some reason cheese the fact that those certain few enemies all spawn in close proximity to each other and next to a spawn point. Oh, and we just killed a fox for 700 damage. I'm so sorry, poor little foxy. Ah, oh, this game, it really is something magnificent. So yes, we're back at the camp and we just do it again. Lovely and simple. And that's genuinely how you can just win this game because the more levels we get, the more overpowered our character gets and basically the more we're going to be able to cheese through every single option this game has. You see, to make your character really anything good, you need talents which allow you to, for example, do lockpicking and you definitely at least want some progress in charisma. Charisma will allow you to do every single quest in the game, meaning having some points into that allow you to manipulate your way around the court intrigue sections of the game, which you're going to be spending most of your time in if you're actually playing this legitimately. When it comes to attributes, you don't have an unlimited amount of points to spend, so make sure to sync them in wisely. And by that, I mean just pour it all into accuracy. And then once that's done, pour it all into endurance. That's basically all you need to do. Because there are some really wacky things you can actually apply to your firearms later in the game. For example, you can apply something to your gun, which actually increases its stun by 
50%, meaning instead of just stunning an enemy and having them crouch down on the ground, they literally get flung halfway across the universe. Now it doesn't really matter what stage of the game you're at, because you can pull off this exploit. You can pull it off after literally just finishing the tutorial at level 2, you can pull off this exploit later into the game, it's completely up to you, but if you ever find yourself at an impasse and you'd like to get this game over with but you're struggling to beat a certain enemy, then make sure to quite simply equip a gun and come over here, farm yourself some levels, and then use those farmed levels for glorious success. Oh my, it would appear we're about to level up into level 7. Oh my. As soon as we do that, some exciting things are going to be happening. Anyway, let us mash the 2 key which allows us to fire our gun. Ah, success. Level 7. So we're going to make it so that we can now anoint our weapons and a special attribute. So we're going to sync that into accuracy so that we can now use even higher level weapons. And now it's time for the old flint revolver. Fantastic. This thing has a ridiculous fire rate, I might add. So if you're fighting off against a boss with this thing, you are going to defeat it exceedingly quickly. Alright, you know what? I think it's time that we deploy ourselves as literal turret mode and I'll demonstrate to you the ridiculous power of pistols. So, there we go. And then you reload and that's all the bandits dealt with. Uh, in literally four taps of the two key is all it takes. Oh, there's one. And there we go. Glorious success. And we can farm that as many times as we like. Ammo isn't that expensive. Certainly cheaper than all of the expensive weapons we're grabbing off of these corpses. Also, you can deliberately wear clothes which increase your loot chance but not your attributes. If you do that you're going to be finding yourself with many 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 more supplies than last. So actually I'm going to be stacking that. So we have a hat which gives plus 10% loot and a torso which gives plus 25% loot. Very nice. And we're kind of already halfway to level 8 and we haven't even done too much. My oh my, what is this game up to? Honestly you don't even particularly need to go to that camp up there. If you don't want to you can always just respawn out of this house here because the house is just next to the entrance as well. Oh and if you have a large amount of resources from slaying those beastie boys over and over again then I strongly recommend investing in science level 3 and just crafting an absolute ton of greater antidotes because whilst you're probably never going to ever need to use them you can sell them for a hefty amount of money. Oh hello here's more of these little bandits. Now bandits aren't particularly too difficult to deal with because I can just once again spam my two key down and away they go. Ah banditos. Now that was easy. Game I'd like to loot this bandit here but you appear to have accidentally deployed him inside of a box. I cannot get my loot from him. I wasted a single bullet on him. Look at that, Siora. This is terrible. Terrible game design. Zero out of ten. Wait, what do you mean this game has tea leaves? This game has tea leaves. Okay, game. Twelve out of ten. Game of the year. I'm calling it now. Greedful. Best game. It's better than The Witcher 3. Ladies and gentlemen. Witcher 3, did that have tea? No. Oh my goodness, what a game indeed. A classical, court-based, intrigue game where they really, really wanted to put almost all of the focus into the fact that it was choose-your-own-adventure adventure and you only fought someone if it was your last resort because you could always use diplomacy to win the day and no I've turned it into a hack and slash MMO grind fest adventure game. What a fantastically unique specimen this game is. Anyway ladies and gentlemen I've been the Spiffing Brit and this today has been a very fantastic expedition into the wonderful game that is Greedfall. A game all about colonialism but also most importantly I think it's very important that a game no matter what type it is can be exploited as that's why we've decided to choose this very unique game. If you have enjoyed what you've seen, then hey, feel free to give the video a like. It massively helps me out. Thank you very much. I'd be very interested to hear roughly what you guys in the comment section actually feel about this game. It's getting a lot of harsh reviews from critics, but equally the average person is rating this quite highly on Steam. So be very interested to see whether you feel that this is a game which can actually hold up to the caliber of The Witcher 3, or whether you'd much rather cast it down to the depths of Roblox. The choice is yours, ladies and gentlemen. Simply vote A for this game is up there with The Witcher 3 or vote Z for this game is comparable to Roblox and must be cast off into the pits of hell. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you have all enjoyed watching today. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these very, very unique specimens of a video possible. Thank you very much, you lovely patrons. And also to each and every one of you who take time out of your day to send me games that you'd like to see me exploit or ideas for fantastic fantastic exploits which you remember from a long lost childhood. Thank you very much, they do make my job a whole lot easier. And hey, if you're wondering what video to watch next, then look no further than this one on screen now. It's been handpicked by myself to be absolutely what you would love to watch. Anyway, I've been the Spiffing Brit, and I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Goodbye for now.